In this video, we are going to look at chapter 7, which is on biodiversity. So these are the learning outcomes of chapter 7, which is 1. We are going to look at the hierarchical classification based on linear classification and Wu's domain. And then second, explain the concept of binomial nomenclature. And then the third uh, learning objective is to state the component of the five kingdom system of classification. Number four, state the component in the six kingdom of classification. And then number five, state the component in the three domain system. Number six, describe the level and examples of biodiversity. Number seven, explain the importance of biodiversity. Number eight, explain the factors that cause uh, threats to biodiversity. And number nine, describe the action taken to conserve biodiversity. So in this video, we are just going to look at uh, the first five okay, um, learning objectives uh, of chapter 7. So this is the uh, subtopics of chapter 7, which is 7.1 taxonomy and 7.2 is biodiversity. So in this video, we are going to look at only subtopic 7.1, which consists of binomial nomenclature, hierarchical classification, the tree domain system, and also the phylogenetic tree. Subtopic 7.1, taxonomy. It is a scientific discipline concerned with the naming and classifying organism. Okay, so you have to name the organism uh, by using scientific names, okay. So it, uh, scientific name it has uh, two. It consists of two names, which is the genus and also specific specific epithet, okay. So uh, and then classifying organism. So be, uh, this is based on uh, example, okay, by looking at the morphology. And another way is by looking at their genetic composition, which is their DNA, okay. So uh, in the 18th century, this scientist, which is Carlos Linnaeus, developed a way to name and organize species. Two key features of his system remain useful useful today, which is one, binomial nomenclature. So binomial, it means that the name consists of two names, okay, uh, which is the specific, uh, the first one is the genus, and then the second one is specific epithet. So that, that's why we call it as binomial, okay, they have two names, usually they have two names, uh, so uh, which is the scientific names okay, of organism. Second, hierarchical classification, how to, orga, uh, how to class organism. Okay? So one way is by looking at the morphology, and the second one is by looking at the genetic composition. Okay, so the first one is the binomial nomenclature. It is the system of naming living, living organism by using unique two-part name. Okay, unique two-part name. So example, the scientific name of uh, leopard, which is Panthera pardus. Okay, so uh, if uh, this scientific name were to be uh, typed and all printed, okay, so they must be in italic form, okay, like this one, okay, Panthera pardus. And uh, the first name is uh, the genus name, and the second name, which is the pardus, is the uh, specific epithet. Okay, so if you look at the way that uh, of how you um, write the scientific name, the first letter must be capitalized, okay, and the rest is small letters, okay, including the second name, which is the a specific epithet, it must be in small letters, okay. So uh, if you if you were to write uh, in short form, in short form, okay. So the first name, which is the genus, you can just write uh, its initial, and then a dot, okay, uh, and then uh, the second name, which is written full, okay. So again, if uh, if it is the same, if it were to be printed, it must be in italic form, okay. And then uh, if you were to uh, write it uh, handwritten, okay, so you must underline 
uh, both names, okay, the, gen uh, the genus and the specific epithet. But usually, um, the uh, when you underline the two names, okay, there must be a gap. Uh, they there must be a gap, okay, between the genus and also the specific ep uh, specific epithets, okay, like this. Okay, for this. So, underline each name. But it is still accepted if you just write, uh, if you just underline the whole name. Okay, it is still accepted. Okay. So, the same if you were to uh, handwritten uh, the scientific names. Okay. So, you can uh, write first the initial of the name genus. Okay, which is P. And then, uh, full stop. And then, for this, okay, again, underline uh, the, the scientific name, okay, so you can only write the short form, uh, if uh, if you were to write a scientific article, uh, you have to write the full name first, and then the rest uh, of, of the text that you've mentioned the scientific name, you can uh, write it in short form, okay, but the first the first time you mention in the text it must be written full okay the rest you can just uh you can just short form okay the the scientific name like this okay like this one okay so these are just uh, a few examples of scientific names uh, in the genus panthera okay so genus panthera Okay, so you have the leopard here, which is Panthera pardis. You have the African lion, which is the Panthera leo. Uh, you have the tiger, which is the Panthera tigris, and jaguar, which is the Panthera onca. Okay, so uh, again, the the first name, which is the Panthera, has to be written, uh, has to be capitalized. The first letter must be capitalized. Okay. And then uh, the specific epithet, okay, which is written in red here, uh, is all uh, small letters, okay. You can uh, write this name in short form, okay. P uh, uh, dot for this, okay. If it were to be handwritten, you have to underline, okay. Pantera Leo, underline. Pantera tigris underline and Pantera onca underline. Okay, so it is still accepted if you uh, were to write uh, to underline the whole name. Okay, all species come from the same genus, so all these cat species, okay, can be. Uh, they are they come from the same genus the second key feature of how Linnaeus classify organism is through hierarchical classification okay so the system of it is the system of grouping organism according to a hierarchy of increasingly inclusive categories okay so species that appear to be closely related are grouped into the same genus so genus is here okay so it is uh, so uh, a taxonomic unit at every level of hierarchy is called a taxon so each each level here okay is called a taxon and then organisms are arranged in eight level which begins with the broadest categories followed by inclusive categories okay so these are the the this uh, the eight level of uh, how Linnaeus classify organism. So the first one is uh, domain. Okay, domain. The second one is kingdom. The third one is phylum. And then the fourth one is class. The fifth one is order. The uh, next one is family. The seventh level uh, is the genus. And then the last one is the specific epithet. Okay, so these are the eight levels of uh, classification that ha that you have to remember. Okay, here is an example of uh, how you classify leopard. Okay, so this is a leopard. 
The scientific name of leopard is Panthera pardus. So this is this at the species level. Okay, so the leopard or the Panthera pardus is in the genus Panthera. So if you look at how you write uh, the scientific name, it must be written in italic. Okay, including uh, at the genus level, you it, it is still in italic. So the leopard is in the family Philidae. Okay, so if you look at other uh, families, okay, uh, they are written, okay, uh, ending with AE, okay, Philidae, uh, and then you have an uh, example that we have looked at uh, in chapter um, in chapter 6, which is uh, photosynthesis, you have the family Cactaceae, okay, and then another uh, example of your common um family for turmeric is zingiberaceae so that is for plant okay so uh, a feature of how you uh feature of naming uh, organism uh, at the family level if you look at the the ending of uh, of their uh, family name it ends with ae okay and then uh, the order for leopard is carnivora and then the class is mammalia uh, and then the kingdom is Animalia. And then the domain is Eukarya. Okay, so there are only three domains, which is you have the Eukarya, you have the bacteria, and also you have the archaea. Okay, so each, uh, it says here at each level or rank, species are placed in groups within uh, more inclusive groups. Okay, so each level here, okay, is called a taxon. So uh, here I've uh, given another example of organism, which is your common domestic cats. Okay, so if you look at the family, it is uh, the the cat is in the same family as the lab, uh, as the leopard, which is the Philidae. Okay, so uh, they are uh, this is uh, an addition. Okay, uh, below the family you have the the subfamily, which is Philidae, and then the genus is okay so again when you start writing the genus name it must be written in italic and then the uh, the uh, scientific name of that organism must be written also in italic okay so this is uh, the short form uh, of the scientific name for cats which is f catus but the full name okay when you first time uh, write uh, the the scientific name you must write the name in full okay felis Catus. Then only uh, the subsequent name in, in the text you can short form. Okay, so Felis Catus is the scientific name for cat. Okay, so uh, the five kingdom system classification. So it is developed by this scientist, which is Whitaker in uh, 1969. Okay, so um, the kingdom are consists of Monera. Uh, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Okay, so Monera, protist, fungi, plants, and also animals. So five kingdoms. So kingdom fungi was added from the previous classification. Previous classific uh, classification only consists of four kingdoms. Okay, so the classification of organism are based on morphological observation. Okay, so these are just based on uh, by looking at the morphology. Okay, so uh, so we take a taxonomist was the first uh, one to propose the five kingdom classification. So you have the Monera, uh, Protista, Fungi. Plantae and Animalia. Okay, so for Monera, the mode of nutrition is either autotrophs, autotrophic, or heterotrophic. Okay, so the body feature is is that they lack um, well-defined nucleus. It means that they do not have any nucleus or uh, cell organelles. Okay, example you have the bacteria, blue-green algae. Okay, and then for Protista. Mode of nutrition is both autotroph uh, autotrophic and heterotrophic. The body feature is that some organisms use pseudopodia or cilia or flagella for movement. Okay, so these are protista. 
So example is uh, Emma, Amoeba, you have the Paramecium and also you have Uglena. So obviously for this organism, they have um, uh, organelles. Okay. So the third, uh, uh, the third uh, uh, kingdom is the fungi. So as uh, they are multicellular, non-green eukaryotic. Okay. So the mode of nutrition is uh, saprophytic uh, or parasitic, and sometimes can be symbiotic. Okay. So um, body is uh, uh, fungus is made is made up of long filaments called the hyphae. Okay. So that uh, the network of hyphae is mycelium. So example, you have yeast. Okay, rhizophores, mushroom, and moles. The fourth kingdom is plantae. So they are multicellular eukaryotes. They are autotrophs. They are producers. Okay, they carry out, uh, carry out photosynthesis. So uh, body feature is that they exhibit high level of tissue differentiation. Okay, obviously they will have um, organelles, nucleus, okay, um, and then uh, they have specialized body organs. They have the fruits, the roots, the leaf, the trunk, okay, so those are the different uh, uh, body organs of uh, plant. Okay, so you have the trees, the plants, uh, and also shrubs, okay, shrubs. And then uh, the Fifth kingdom is Animalia. So they are multicellular eukaryotes. They are heterotrophs. They are consumers. And then uh, body uh, body feature is that they exhibit high level of tissue differentiation. Okay. And then have uh, specialized body organs. They have well uh, developed nervous system. Okay. So the different uh, as you look, look at uh, the feature for Animalia and Plasdae is that. Uh, the difference is that uh, for animalia, they have nervous system, okay? And then, um, examples are fish, okay, insects, animals, humans, and also birds. So, these are the five kingdom classification proposed by Whitaker in 1969. Okay, so the next one is the sixth kingdom classification. So this one is developed by the scientists uh, named Woos in 1977. So uh, the kin uh, so it has six kingdom. Okay. So you have the kingdom Monera, which uh, which is taken from the Whitaker. That uh, so the kingdom Monera is divided into two different kingdom, which is Eubacteria and also Archaeobacteria. Okay. So uh, so. That's why it, it is uh, consists of six kingdom. You have you divide the kingdom Monera into two, Eubacteria and also Archaea bacteria, and the rest and the rest is maintained. Okay, you have the Protista, the same as the wheat taker uh, proposed. You have the fungi, you have the plantae, and then you have the animalia. So six different kingdom uh, proposed by Woos, okay? And then uh, the classification is based on the evolution and molecular genetics, okay? So, uh, uh, so this is um, based on their genetic composition, their DNA, okay? So if you look at uh, here, you have the archaea and also bacteria, okay? Before they were classified in the kingdom, Monera by Whitaker. By Woos divided them into two, which is Eubacteria, okay, this one here, and Archaea bacteria. Okay, the rest maintain Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and also Animalia. Okay, so in this slide, as you can see, what is the difference between Eubacteria uh, and Archaea bacteria? Okay, so if you look at the center here, these are the common feature of these two organisms. They are prokaryotes. So obviously, prokaryote does not have any nucleus. They are single cell, unicellular. They have ribosomes, and also they have no membrane-bound organelles. So this one you have to remember back the feature of eukaryotes. Uh, sorry, prokaryotes. Okay, uh, and then for you bacteria. Uh, the feature of eubacteria is that uh, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan and they cannot survive in extreme environment and then they consist of bacteria and also cyanobacteria. 
As for the archaea, uh, the cell wall is not made up of peptidoglycan. Okay, so they live in extreme environment. Okay, such as in hot um, um, ponds. Okay, with, uh, which is uh, thermophiles and then halophiles and then methanogens. Okay, so these are ex examples of extreme condition live by archaea bacteria. Okay, so system of classification uh, throughout uh, the years. Okay, so first was proposed by Linnaeus in uh, 1735, okay, which only consists of two kingdoms. Okay, so there's only vegetable, vegetabilia, and then you have the animalia. And then uh, in 1980, uh, in uh, 1866, okay, so, uh, which is proposed by Haeckel, the, it consists of uh, three kingdoms, okay, addition is protista. And then uh, vegetabilia was uh, renamed uh, uh, by Plante, and then uh, animalia still remain animalia. And then uh, in 1937, uh, you have uh, the, the scientist captain, uh, proposed two empires, which is uh, prokaryota and also eukaryota. And then uh, in 1956, Cop uh, Copeland okay, proposed a four kingdoms uh, classification, which is mycota, protoctista, okay, and then plantae, and then animalia. Okay, and then uh, we take uh, in 1969, proposed five kingdoms classification, Monera, protista, fungi, uh, uh, plantae, and also animalia. Okay, and then in 1977, Woos proposed a six kingdom. So the uh, kingdom Monera is divided into two, which is U bacteria and Archaea bacteria, and the rest maintain as the same as the Whitaker, protista, fungi, plantae, and also animalia. So this, uh, this is the sixth kingdom. So this is the five kingdoms. Okay, and then you have the four kingdom um, in uh, before that. And then in uh, 1990, Woos okay, uh, classify organism based on three domains, okay, which is uh, bacteria, archaea, uh, archaea okay, and then eukarya. So these are the uh, three domains that remains uh, today. Okay, so three domain system. The three domain system was proposed by Woos uh, et al. in 1990. Okay, at all it means that uh, Woos and uh, his friends, other scientists at all. Okay. So the classification based on molecular biology study. Okay, so they classify organism based on their uh, uh, DNA genetic composition and then uh, organism classified into three domains which is um, bacteria, archaea and also eukarya. Okay, so bacteria and uh, archaea are basically prokaryotes. Okay, eukarya are eukaryotes. Okay, so the domain system is above the kingdom level. So before you enter the kingdom level, you have the domain. Okay, you have the domain and then only uh, it enters into the kingdom taxon. Okay, so six kingdom and the three uh, domain classification. Okay, so according to Woos that uh, classify organism into three domains, which is the archaea. So archaea, uh, uh, the kingdom is Ar archaea bacteria. And then for the second uh, domain is bacteria. So which uh, the kingdom is U bacteria. And as for the, uh, the third domain, eukaryota, so it consists of four kingdoms, okay, plantae, animalia, fungi, and protista. So basically, the first two domains are prokaryotes, okay, so the eukaryota are eukaryotes, okay. So for, for, for this, they are unicellular. The domain archaea and, uh, archaea and bacteria are uni cellular okay so this uh, can uh, be uh, unicellular and also multicellular okay so eukary eukaryota are more complex organism 
uh, compared to the uh, the uh, the organism in the archaea and bacteria uh, domains. Okay, so the domain bacteria. Okay, the kingdom is also bacteria, and then the characteristics of uh, bacteria is that they are unicellular. They do not have any nucleus. Okay, they are commonly found. Okay, example you have the proteobacteria. Okay, which are common in soil and also animal intestine. And uh, for cyanobacteria, they live in aquatic environment. Okay, so for the second kingdom, which is archaea, so archaea, this team, they are unicellular organism. They do not have any nucleus and they are found in extreme environment, okay, such as in hot uh, tem uh, temperature um, ponds, okay. So, uh, and then, uh, example, you have the methanogens. They live in swamps and produce met methane gas, okay. So, another example is extreme thermo uh, thermophiles, okay. They live in hot spring, okay. That was the word that I was looking for, hot spring. Okay, not pond, hot springs. And then uh, for eukaryota, uh, for uh, the third uh, domain, which is eukary eukarya, which consists of the next four kingdom, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. So they are basically uh, eukaryotes. That uh, The feature of eukaryotes is that they have nucleus and also uh, membrane-bound membrane organelles. Okay, so for protista, they are mostly, uh, most are unicellular, they have no cell wall, and they mostly live in water. So, example are amoeba species, SP stands for species, okay, so it means that in the genus amoeba, there are so many different types of uh, amoeba species. Same goes to paramecium, paramecium species, SP stands for species, there are many different species of uh, paramecium and then uh, same uh, for uglena sp okay uglena species there are many different uh, species of uglena so basically they live in uh, they are aquatic organisms okay and then for fungi they are unicellular and also multicellular they have cell wall the the uh, mode of nutrition is that they absorb food okay from hosts okay they uh, they have hosts that they uh, depend on and uh, most live on land so example uh, are yeast mushroom moles and mildews okay and then for the kingdom plantae they are multicellular they have cell wall they make their own uh, their own food by photosynthesis they are uh, autotrophs they are producers examples are fern Moses, trees, grasses, and also herbs. Okay, and the last kingdom is Animalia. They are multicellular. They have no cell wall, obviously. In just their food, they are consumers, obviously. They live in uh, on lands and water. Okay. Uh, they are terrestrial or aquatic. Okay, so example, you have coral, sponges. So these are includes in the kingdom Animalia. Uh, you have fish, insects, worm, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Okay. So this is supposed to be a video which uh, I cannot play here. So we just. Okay. Importance of taxonomy. The first uh, significance of uh, classifying organism, which is the first one, is uh, it 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 enables scientists to communicate efficiently. Okay, on biological knowledge. And then second, avoid confusion, okay, as no two organisms can have the same scientific name. Okay, so every organism has their own scientific name, which is um, the same uh, throughout the world. Okay, for example, mango. Okay, so maybe in different states, uh, mango is known as uh, by the local people by many different names. Okay, for example, uh, manga, okay, or in different states. Uh, can be called as pelam. Okay, so, um, so different different organism have uh, the local people name this uh, organism according to what they are called locally. But uh, to avoid this confusion, okay, when you are referring to that specific species.
species okay so that's why this species they have a scientific name so that different people in different area know that uh, that organism by the same unique name which is uh, for mango is mangifera indica okay and then uh, exa the third uh, importance or significance of uh, classifying organism is uh, to help in the world's biodiversity documentation and then the last uh, significant is that uh, it develops strategies for protection and conservation of endangered species okay so the next subtopic is on phylogenetic uh, tree so it is a diagram shows uh, evolutionary relationships amongst organisms that have common ancestors based upon similarities and differences in their physical or genetic characteristics okay so the patterns of branching in the phylogenetic reflects how species or other groups evolve from a series of common ancestors each branch, uh, branch point represents the divergence of evolution of two evolutionary lineages uh, from a common ancestors okay so this is uh, how a phylogenetic tree uh, looks like okay uh, for uh, so this one is an example of phylogenetic tree uh, at the domain level okay so uh, uh, you have here the bacteria the bacteria archaea and also eukarya okay so this is the phylogenetic tree okay so where you, where there is a node okay node you have here nodes okay uh, where the branch branches okay so it represents common ancestors for that organism okay so basically all organisms okay they come from the same ancestor the bacteria archaea and eukarya so the node uh, represents the common ancestor for all organism alive today here okay here and then um, you have this branch here okay that diverge organism into archaea and also eukarya okay and then uh, the node here for example okay is the branch that diverge uh, organism uh, into um, for example algae okay you have the red algae you have the green algae and then you have the terrestrial plants okay land plants and then the node here diverge organism into fungi and animal animals okay basically fungi and animals if you look at uh, this uh, node basically they come from the same ancestors okay so this classification scheme emphasizes differences between three main uh, group which is the three domains okay based on their phylogeny okay they are phylogenetic trees so usually how to get this uh, uh, phylogenetic tree one is through the uh, by looking at the morphology and the more specific method is uh, by looking at their uh, genetic composition okay okay so the three domains of life again you have the three domains okay the the bacteria the archaea and then the, the eukarya so for all these organism they have common ancest ancestors long before uh, all organism exists okay common ancestor of life here okay so the note here so uh, so as uh, time goes by and then organism evolve okay so organism that live in different environment will evolve and adapt okay and become different species that some of the species have common features okay so this organism will then be classified into different groups okay different taxon so uh, all the organism uh, now is classified into three domain which is uh, the archaea, the bacteria archaea and also eukarya okay so these are the organism classified under the uh, domain bacteria okay uh, so if you look at here the for the mitochondria and also chloroplast originally they were proposed to be a uh, unicellular uh, organism which is a prokaryote that enters into uh, um, eukaryotes okay and then uh, becomes the organelle within that cells okay 
maintain uh, today as mitochondria and also chloroplasts. And then uh, for the these are the organisms in the domain archaea, and then these are the organisms in the domain of eukarya. Okay. Okay. So another example of phylogenetic trees here uh, is for the uh, genus Panthera. Okay. So uh, here is, uh, we start with the order Carnivora. Okay. So obviously, uh, in the order Carnivora, you have many different uh, families. Okay. Given in this diagram, only the Finidae, Mustelidae, and also Canidae. Okay. So if you look at the name for the uh, at the uh, family taxon, okay, all ends in AE. Okay. So AE. So if you look, if you come across any family names, either be it animals or plants, okay, they must end, uh, they must end in AE or EAE, -E, okay. So for example, for plant, you have the gingerbraceae, uh, cactaceae, okay. So so those are the feature of how you name, uh, the family. And then start, uh, and then the next taxon is the genus, okay. So in the fa uh, in the family Philidae, the genus here given here is Panthera, okay. The species is. Uh, the species is Panthera pardis, which is the leopard. In the family Mustelidae, uh, here given uh, in this example is uh, the genus Taxidae uh, and also Lutra. Okay, uh, so example is uh, Taxidae Texas, which is the American badger. And then Lutra, 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 which is the European uh, otter. Okay. Canis is uh, Canis, the genus Canis. Examples of species are Canis lantras, which is uh, coyote. Okay. And then uh, another example is Canis lupus, which is the grey wolf. Okay. So this is some examples of um, uh, organism uh, that you can. Okay. Um, build up its phylogenetic tree. Okay, we stop here uh, and continue in the next video on the next subtopic, which is biodiversity.